For those that are new, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on all notifications to be notified whenever a brand new video is posted onto this channel. Thank you all so much for your continued support. Now let's begin. There have been many incarnations of George A. Romero's original Day of the Dead movie adaptation following the 1989 release of the original Day of the Dead, following that in 2018 with a reboot of the Day of the Dead franchise, and now, 2018, we are introduced to Day of the Dead Bloodline. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to my Day of the Dead Bloodline 2018 spoiler movie review. Directed by Hector Hernandez Vicens, Day of the Dead Bloodline 2018 follows follows a core concept of what the original was, and which also introduces us to a brand new set of faces such as Sophia Skelton, who portrays the main actress of the movie known as Zoe Parker, Jeff Gum, who plays the role of Miguel Salazar, who is pretty much the commander-in-chief of the bunker that they are currently located alongside his brother, Baca Salazar, who is played by Marcus Vanco, and the film does offer a very interesting take on the story alone, but that doesn't mean that just because it's different, it's good. Now, Day of the Dead Bloodline, if anything, in in my personal opinion was better than Day of the Dead 2008 starring Nick Cannon, but just because Day of the Dead Bloodline is better than Day of the Dead 2008 does not make this a good film. If anything, this was a very, very bad film, and here's why. Now, the movie did offer a unique take as to what would have happened if there was an outbreak and the zombie apocalypse occurred, your typical zombie film, except they had so much potential based off of the Red Band trailer, based off of the promotional use and the poster to turn this into a well-rounded zombie film. But Day of the Dead Bloodline once again falls short as we understand that there is a small group of military personnel and survivalists that dwell within an underground bunker as they seek out to find a cure to save the world. Now, this film introduces, if anything, some of the worst acting that I've seen in any movie in a very long time. The characters in this film, nothing against the actors or actresses, did a piss poor job in getting me invested in any character in this film. If anything, the only four memorable characters to me were Zoe Parker, who was obviously the main character being portrayed in the film, we had Max, the main zombie of the film, and of course the brothers Miguel and Baca. Now, having to look at the way the story was portrayed, we had Max, who was this patient of Zoe before the zombie apocalypse actually occurred, and he just seemed to be very obsessed with Zoe. He actually engraved her name in his arm by carving it in, which is pretty much a sign of a psychopath, which having to look at the overall narrative objectively, he was a psychopath from the beginning all the way up until the very end of the film, but it was the way the story was written, it was the way the characters were portrayed, and it was the overall direction of the film that drove this in being one of the worst zombie films, I think in my opinion, in quite some time. Now, the premise of the story is Zoe is trying to conduct research alongside her team and figuring out how this one patient had died. H1N1 was pretty much the leading cause of this patient having to die. Fast forward in the film, they have a party, and Max somehow you know, is still in the facility after being treated by Zoe and Zoe trying to draw his blood and figuring out, you know, why he's so, you know, unique in terms of his anatomy, the way his blood works and whatnot. They're trying to study this person. He was a frequent patient of the clinic, but nonetheless, he was still at the facility even after hours while everyone was having the party. And during all of this, he attempts to rape Zoe while patient Zero stands back up and attacks everybody. So the premise of the film, four hours prior to the outbreak, we saw how these, you know, researchers and these, you know, know, medical personnel are all trying to figure out what's happening, and then fast forward, they have a party, patient zero is miraculously up, he starts to eat everybody, and then the zombie apocalypse occurs. Now, while in the bunker, I saw so many inconsistencies with certain characters and the overall direction of these characters. I mean, first of all, I will say the film looks like it was just on a very low budget. Obviously, this went straight to DVD, uh, not in theaters, of course, otherwise it would have had more promotion. And I don't blame this film for going straight to DVD because the overall narrative of the movie was just complete trash. And it doesn't really surprise me because it's January and the film did drop in January and anyone out there who has a brain would know that any horror horror film that drops during the month of January is just complete and utter trash. So we fast forward as Zoe is attempting to cater to this little sick girl named Lily and she attempts to round everybody up and going into the city and trying to go back to the same clinic that she was working at 
and attempts to finding antibiotics and whatnot. And the overall premise of the film is Zoe catering to this little girl and trying to prevent her from getting sick, which is a good narrative, you know, if you look at it objectively. But from a subjective point of view, it didn't make any sense how Zoe was risking the lives of other people and everybody in the bunker just to go out and get some antibiotics for this girl. We had babies in the film, we had other people that had kids in the movie, and for some weird reason, Lily was the only character that was primarily focused among any of the other kids at the bunker because she was sick. It just didn't make any sense to me. But either way, Zoe goes out with her team. She attempts to try to find these antibiotics, in which case they do. And as the team is heading out and trying to leave the facility, it's because of Zoe going into one of her previous labs that she hadn't been in in quite some time. She walks in there, she grabs her old pictures of her her mother, because obviously during this time she wasn't able to have any memories of her family because of course when the zombie apocalypse happened, she ran out the clinic, but it's because of this for some weird reason, yet again, Max is in the same facility in the same room as Zoe is. And you have to ask yourself as to how long has it been since this outbreak actually occurred and Max is still in the same facility, ironically enough, in the same clinical room as Zoe right now, the same psychopath that's you know been so obsessed with this female, he's still ironically enough in the same place at the same time with her, a year having to follow after the outbreak. So that didn't really make any sense to me. It was just too much of a coincidence. And the biggest coincidence was how she pretty much ran out the room when she saw him and she didn't really recognize him at first, but as, you know, unique as Max was as a character, we see how she pretty much drops like this little rag behind and he picks this rag up and sniffing it like a dog in attempts to pursue her and chase after her and, and tracking her down. And in which that's exactly what he did in the film because he ends up being some stealthy ninja in the film by hanging on to the bottom of the armored vehicles that they used to get from the bunker outside and vice versa. And he was hanging on the whole time and the minute we see how they pull back up in the bunker, Max pretty much rolls on under and he goes into the bushes and hides and he has consciousness, he understands what he's doing. And it was just so stupid because this whole time nobody within the facility had seen this person drop on down, let alone hear him drop on down and rolling himself into the bushes, into like the little mini forest that they had guarded. Nobody was able to see this, you know, unknown you know, a person just roaming around like their facility without having to be tracked or located, it just didn't make any sense. So as we carry on forward, one of the kids actually kicks one of his soccer balls into the bushes, into the forest, and you know, the, the cameras are ironically just zooming in and out, trying to, you know, allude on the idea that he may be eaten by Max, but Max doesn't end up eating him because there is another uh, military personnel that stops the kid and saying, what are you doing? You know, get back inside. And as the kid goes, you know, about his little merry way, uh, this other officer is trying to find his ball and he gets eaten by Max. And I had a problem with this because technically speaking, this should be the first victim among the, among the entire facility. And he does nothing. He does nothing to showcase his presence. Um, maybe Max had, you know, eaten him alive to the point where this person was not able to reanimate his body and, you know, turn into a zombie himself, but instead Max had just completely obliterated him by, you know, going for the neck and making sure that he's unable to reanimate himself. It just didn't make any sense, but Max eats one of the, uh, you know, military personnel. He sneaks inside, and again, once again, Ninja Zombie, he sneaks behind a couple of cars, he jumps up on this, you know, ventilation system, and he begins to crawl through the vents. And as he's crawling through the vents, we see how he's obviously in pursuit of Zoe. He has an obsession for her, a very sexual possession, and the whole time he's looking for her and scouring for her, and then he obviously came across a few people that he had to kill along the way, and it just seemed so cheesy to me how it's basically a love story. It's basically a love story about this guy who, ironically enough, is dead, but he still has these lustful desires and attempts to finding this woman and what is it raping her again is that because that was his original motive when he first came across her before he died and we see how finally to make a very long story short he finds her and they pretty much contain him for the most part in trying to study him and it looks like it's because of his blood that ends up being one of the main sources for finding a vaccination because then Zo had to make sure that his blood could be the key so they decided to try to let other zombies in the 
the facility, you know, one by one to study them and draw their blood. And it got so overwhelming for these military soldiers that the zombies were able to push their way through and kill even more people. And again, the characters were not memorable. The acting was just terrible. It just seemed like a very low budget B film that you would not find in theaters because everything just seems so quirky, so tacky. Um, the one thing I will say is the makeup for the zombies were really good. Um, but aside from that, you know, the special effects were just very low in quality and everything about the film just was nonsensical. How did nobody hear or see Max through security cameras or all the military personnel that was present on the base? We had multiple people with guns you know, drawn, having to figure out and always keep an eye out as to what was happening on the outside. You're telling me that nobody was able to spot this one zombie, let alone the other people that he was killing? He killed several people in the facility, and you're telling me that nobody was able to check up in finding out what was going on? And the original film did have uh, more people within the bunker itself, and this film didn't seem like it had much, but we did have a few people, a few uh, just common folks in the facility, like, you know, your typical uh, chef, your typical, you know, mailman, they were all in there, and ironically enough, when all hell broke loose, as Max freed himself in attempts to, you know, finding and pursuing Zoe, we see how the entire facility begins to get overran by Max, letting all the zombies in, ironically enough, and some of these zombies, they're eating the people, obviously, very reminiscent to the original, but towards the end of the film, we don't get any answers as to whatever happened to the woman and her baby, because there was a woman and an actual infant baby in the film, but nobody knows what happened to her. Is she dead? Is she alive? We see that the kids are alive. Obviously, they're not going to murder kids in a film. You know, you have to keep it, you know, rated G for people that don't get offended by having kids being murdered, but uh, we didn't get any answers as to what happened to the rest of the folks in the facility. We didn't get any answers as to what happened for the most part to all the, all the bodies that were all around the military base. Did they get, did they burn them? Whatever happened to like everything that, you know, it just didn't make any sense. Uh, Baca, who was one of the main actors of the film, one of the main soldiers, the brother to Miguel, who was the asshole of the entire group, and the chief commander in chief of the entire facility, um, you know, Baca ended up living, even though he was bit on his arm and bit right by his neck. For some weird reason, Zoe was able to reverse the after effects of the virus, and obviously she had a relationship with Baca. Um, and I will say, I mean, Baca, from a narrative to where you want to invest in his character, he seemed a tad bit believable, but again, the acting was just so quirky. Um, I think that out of everybody, out of all the other military personnel there, uh, Marcus Vanko did do a good job in portraying Baca the best. And Miguel, to me, played by a Jeff Gum, he just didn't seem the type. He didn't seem like the type of character that would be believable in in the film of playing his role as this dictating psychopath who was just drunk in power and wanted to get things done his way. And by the end of the film, we, you know, we see how you know Baca he's hurt because he was eaten by, or he was a, he was almost gonna get eaten by zombies, and he has bite marks, and is always able to reverse it, and then we have a happily ever after ending with them kissing and him having to feel better, and Zoe having to say, it's a new day, it's a new world, we can fix everything, yada yada. It was just so cheesy, it was so bad, and one of the worst aspects of the film, and I don't know who in their right mind thought that this would be a good idea, but there was a sequence to where Max actually let all the other zombies in by, you know, flipping the switch on the door, and as all of these zombies are running inside the facility, the little girl that was heavily focused on in the film, Lily, she actually runs in the exact direction in which the zombies are coming in, and she lives to tell the story, you know what I'm saying? She She's running in the same direction as the zombies are coming in, and behind her is Zoe trying to pursue her and capturing her and trying to save her, and then behind Zoe, we have Max chasing her. So you have Lily, who is dumb enough to run in the exact direction of where the zombies are coming in, with Zoe having to be stupid enough and following this girl and trying to pursue after her and then you have this undead you know psychopath who's chasing them both down and meanwhile none of the zombies that were trying to get in the facility as they were coming in none of the zombies actually recognized or even picked up the idea that they were two fresh human beings running right past them in their direction you know it just didn't make any sense to me logically speaking if you have a zebra run in the exact direction of a pack of lions those lions are going to devour the zebra so the zombies instead of devouring lily in which they should have and devouring zoe 
they actually overlooked them and they continued to run in the building, which was horribly done. As the zombies are getting shot by the people, by some of the other military personnel, it's like nobody picked up the idea that these people just ran out. It was just so terribly done. And I had high hopes for this film because I enjoyed the 1989 movie um, to a degree when I was younger. 10 years ago, ironically enough, I did enjoy a, a, a tad bit of the 2008 variation of Day of the Dead, even though that was, once again, a terribly done film. Uh, 10 years later, I had high hopes in seeing this. And finally, as I'm watching Day of the Dead Bloodline, there were just so many inconsistencies. There were so many things that were just deemed a fallacy. Um, the writing was done piss poor. It felt like a love story, which, again, the original was not based off of a love story. It was a story about survival. It wasn't a story about trying to you know, save a little girl or, you know, pursue your boyfriend or any of that, it was more or less finding the cure so we can put an end to this, but instead, this felt more like a story centered around a few characters, and as for everybody else, just fuck them, so that's what this movie felt like to me, um, they didn't really emphasize too much on anyone else's backstory, let alone, you know, what was happening with anybody else outside of the bunker as well, we didn't have any information as to what happened to the world, if the world actually fell, uh, the governments of the world, nothing, no information on that, at least in the original, and even in, you know, Dawn of the Dead, both the, the original and the remake, we had confirmation that the governments of the world were just, you know, beginning to collapse during those times, and here, we didn't get any information as to what happened to the outside world, we didn't get any information as to what happened to the remainder of the survivors by the end of this film as to who lived, who died, but more or less telling a BS story of this woman who saved her boyfriend and this little random girl after her parents had died as well, you know, from, you know, impeccable death because it was, it was inevitable that she was going to die, I mean, but then again, they didn't want to get her killed because the zombies were too busy hunting other people, so this film was just bad. Um, you know, out of five stars, I would give this not even a half a star. It was so bad, and I love zombie films. I, I just wish that they had a better direction, a bigger budget, and the movie was extended time-wise to where they could have marinated a lot of, you know, what was being portrayed in the film, because you could have had it to where, you know, you could have extended more on certain people's stories and whatnot, but instead, it just felt more like a piss-poor, dragged-on film. Obviously, this was just a cash grab. Um, I really do hope to God that we don't have to wait another 10 years to see another Day of the Dead movie, uh, because if they do plan on making another one, I really do hope that they actually bring in someone who knows how to direct. They bring in writers that actually know how to write a good story, and for all intents and purposes, they bring in actors and actresses who know how to act. And, you know, I, I wasn't invested in anything. It's just, it was just so poorly done. The only thing I'll give this film is the fact that there were certain moments where it had like a very dark tone to it, but as quickly as that came, it was just eradicated by this quirky sense of humor from certain characters that had no relevancy in the movie and, and or they had like these love scenes where it was just like forced down your throat. So let me know your thoughts down below, guys, if you guys enjoyed or hated the film. Um, for me, I would not recommend this film. This film was complete trash, and it sucks for me to say that because I was and still am a zombie fan, but every single time I watch anything Day of the Dead related, it just, it draws me away from the franchise that much more, and that's sad to say because if you're looking at, if you're really looking to have a good time, if you're really looking to have a good time, stay the hell away from Day of the Dead Bloodline.